You're listening to That Gets My Goat on the Doonstief Audio Fiction Magazine. Ah, this is the first recording we've made on this new equipment. It is. I don't, uh, yeah, we've got these. Don't touch. I'm when you touch to... it, and make noise. Hi, everybody. Welcome to That Gets My Goat. Yes. First That Gets My Goat in a long time, huh? Yeah, it's been a little bit. Since summer, right? Well, I think we did a writing one in October, right? It was post-September anyways. Oh, okay. All right, so I was wrong. It's only been a month or so. But uh, yeah, like I was saying, this is the first podcast we've done with this new equipment. Uh, our friend of the show, Scott Pig, uh, sent us microphones. To, what, what are these called? They're stands. They're like tripod stands with a boom arm so you can stand your mic up and bring the boom arm over so that it's there and it's right in front of your mouth and you don't have to touch it for it to be touch right in it, front of your it. mouth. It's really fancy. It's awesome. I'm really excited to have these and I have to say thank you to Scott Pig. Maybe we'll have to do that on the regular show too because I don't think even Scott listens to this. No, nobody does, which is why I had no qualms about doing this topic today. Um, I know you still have qualms, and it's cool. You just say them all again while we talk. Okay. But uh, I recently read a story, uh, performed a story, not just was reading a, a book of short stories. I recently performed a story that is not yet aired. So I wanted to get it out of the way, my issues with the story, my thoughts about the story right now. He performed it actually as a uh, interpretive dance, strangely enough. I'm not sure why that would be. Um, it was a kind of a th – there was a little kabuki theater in there in the middle, <laughs> but mostly it was, yes. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I don't think we ever talked about it on the show, or, or did we? We had major sound problems with one full day of recording where everything we recorded that day – We did mention it for a second on the show. It came out tutti fubari. Yes. As the Italians say in my mind. And uh, <laughs> so we had to throw all of it out. And one of the big things was a, like an hour and 40 minute recording of this story. Usually when we do a story for us or for somebody else, both of us are in the room. One is acting as sort of a producer or a director. And the other just does the story. and Because... Uh, if you've ever read out loud one of these things, there's so much to concentrate on, whether it's your performance, whether it's pronouncing all the words correctly, whether it's doing different voices that you can't – you don't even realize when you make a mistake, when you leave yeah, a sometimes. the out or you say an instead of with. I don't know. There's silly mistakes that you don't even realize you're making. It's great to have somebody watching your backs, uh, somebody spotting you. Yeah. And I've found that that's invaluable. The, I know that you've recorded things and I've recorded things without the other present. And it's not until the editing process that sometimes you'll catch mistakes or it'll be like, oh, gosh, I wish yeah. I had realized that I pronounced that word funny. You know, it, it, there's just too much to concentrate on. I'm glad that we do it that way. I remember way back when I recorded the narration for episode one, I did that. The Phantom Menace. Yes, I did episode one, Double Vision by Derek L. Palmer, by myself, completely. And you recorded your lines by yourself and sent them to me. And uh, the guy who played the other character, I think his name was Duncan, I want to say, he did his lines. I think I was in the room when he did his but lines. But it was on a completely different system. But it was a different day. And I remember as I edited that story, going through and editing and being like, oh, crap said this wrong so i had to stand up and re-record myself saying that and you can tell if you listen to that story you can tell the spots where suddenly my voice quality changes and i say a sentence and then it goes back to the other voice quality and then it comes back again yeah i really like that story and i wish sometimes i think about doing it again yeah because i think it more than all of the other stories we've done has the most like hiss and background <laughs> noise and stuff because I recorded that on like my old little tiny like 599 microphone that came with the computer or whatever. Right. And it's just right there by the fan of the computer. So you <laughs> hear that. And little by little, life has taught us tricks and, and, and certain things. You know, that you got to turn the fan down. You got to point the mic away from the refrigerator, stuff like that. 
that we just didn't know in our first couple episodes. The, you got to unplug the heater to the lizard's cage because somehow that creates feedback, that makes nasty static. Okay, and yeah, and that reminds me of back to where we what started. We were talking about in the first place. Uh, it took a long, long time to record that story the first time. And then when we re- realized that the recording was ruined, I mean, I, I, it was it was start uh, it, to it wasn't salvageable, right? No, it was start to finish hiss uh, yeah. crackliness. Then I think we needed to record it either the next week or two weeks later. We re-recorded it, and it went faster. But there were still mistakes. There were still problems. I mean, luckily I was more familiar with the story, so there were less questions of how to perform it and stuff. But uh, then you sent me the file, and I edited it. So it was a third pass through. Right. And I just, I had a lot of problems with the story. And I, on the day, we had a lot of problems with the story. And I just, I wanted to talk about it, not as like criticizing Green Lantern, you know, or criticizing Cowboys and Aliens or, or you know, a, a worse movie out there. But just from a writer's standpoint, why certain choices were made and whether it worked or not, or whether it's just my bias. And let me pass the baton to you. To, okay. to tell me why you thought we shouldn't do this, just so it's there. Oh, well, I, I don't know. I just worry that and we've talked plenty on our show about comments being constructive and not criticizing somebody's story. And this one's not even on our own show. I don't know uh, if we're being douchebags for talk. I think it's probably okay because, you know, we're, we're trying to constructively talk about stories. And we're not going to mention specific, even the title or author of the story or where it appears it appears in some place really obscure that you'll probably never find it. So there's that. I don't want to sound like a douchebag. I don't think that the story was shit, and I don't think that I wasted my time. It was actually in reading a f- it. Fairly good it's story. Just there were a couple, and again, it's the choices that the writer made. And I'm not going by a performer here. I'm going by a writer because I I've been writing for a long, long time, and. I've gotten pretty good at it. I think I'm good. And, if, and you know, if that sounds arrogant, then, you know, go fuck yourself. Um, most writers have to believe in themselves or they would stop doing it. But, I, you know, there, there are times when I stumble. There are times when, you know, six months later or just a year later, you read something that you wrote and go, God, what was I thinking? That line doesn't work at all. Or, or, or what was I thinking? That line makes no sense. Right. And stuff like that. So, I mean, you can always learn and, and, and learn from your own stuff, learn from other people's stuff. And in this one, I don't know why the choices were made. And I wanted to talk to you about it. I mean, we already did a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I want to put it out there for other people to listen to. Now, why we didn't do it in a real show that people actually listen to rather than that gets my goat that nobody listens to, I don't know. But if we put it out in the real show, then maybe, yeah, maybe the person who wrote the story will hear it and think that I I do think that his story was shit or whatever. Or, 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 you know, maybe it's unprofessional to do work for somebody else's show and then criticize that work. That may be a valid point, but I'm, I'm not trying to do that. Okay, here's the thing. I, recently, I wrote that screenplay, and I know we talked about that on the show. It was a great idea uh-huh. for a story, but I don't know that I pulled it off as well as the story could be. Everybody has picked up a DVD or picked up a book and read the back and thought, wow, this sounds awesome. And they get it home and they're like, oh, shoot, you know, I thought it was going to be something else from what they said on the back. Now, granted, with professional works like that, it's the copy editor or whatever you call that person, the publicist's job to make it sound as good as possible so that you'll buy it. Right. The blurb uh, writer. But everybody has read something where there was a good idea, but, but it, it, it didn't come out as good as the idea deserved or merited. Uh-huh. And with my screenplay, that, that's my big fear. Is that somebody would be like, oh, that's too bad. It was a good idea. He had the chance to be a real writer, but he blew it. Yes, he did. He and blew it! And so that's, that's something that I struggle with. You and I recently wrote, I guess it's kind of like broken mirror stories, where I, I had an experience early this year where a girl I was never attracted to was suddenly beautiful to me. And I couldn't figure out why. I couldn't figure it out. I I was like, what the fudge? And I mulled that over in my mind over and over again, and I couldn't get it out of my head. And I started to think about various scenarios in which a girl who wasn't beautiful was suddenly beautiful. And it started to be like, oh, that's a cool idea for a story. And so I I wrote a couple of different stories 
with that because there's many possible reasons why that could happen. Right. And you went and you wrote a story as well uh, with not the exact same premise, but that has that as its base, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you told me the story and I thought, oh, that's interesting. And I thought I'd try and write a story about it without even telling you that I was going to. And then only later did I find out that you had also written a story about it. And so to me, that's interesting that the unbeautiful girl becomes beautiful could spawn countless stories. And who's to say that we have found the the very best way of telling that story? You know, right. it's just there's nothing new under the sun, but there's new ways of telling the same story or getting the same idea across. Basically, this story was, gosh, I don't even know how to express it. The most important aspect, I guess, to just get it out of the way is it was written in second person. Right. And if you aren't a writer or you read stories that are in English, you might be asking, what is second person? First person is obviously I am telling a story of what happened to me. You're, you're, it's, it's in this kind of story. Third person is he is telling a story about his life. But second person is you went downstairs and found your wife with the next door neighbor. I'm sorry. I, I'll cut that part out. We don't want people to know about that incident. <laughs> Yeah, it's an interesting thing. You don't see very many stories done in that. And the whole time that we were reading it and we kept going, every time we would uh, see it, we were like, it, it immediately seemed to be a choose your own adventure story to us. And every time we'd be reading along and then one of us would go, if you want to do this, turn to page 43. But if you think that you should do this, turn to page 60. Really, that is the only exposure i've had to second person is choose yeah. your own adventures I, I guess sometimes you'd find it in poetry obviously you're talking about the person that you you love and stuff like that but there's still yeah. i music in sometimes that. songs and it just it it is so strange to me uh, that i've never done it never yeah. done second person i really dislike it because it's one of those things where they say, you you go down the stairs. And you're like, no, I don't. I sit right here and read the story. Someone else went down the stairs. This is a story. I didn't do this. You can't. It, it, Stop touching. I, it feels good. Stop. I, I read recently, I, I think it was a character and viewpoint, I think was what it, the book was called. It was a Orson Scott Card book about writing, particularly on the uh, character and viewpoint. Viewpoint, of course, is what the story is t- told from, be it first person, third person, etc. And he talks about that kind of stuff. Does he talk about second? He talks about second person and he talks about also present tense versus past tense as well. But with both of those, he, sa- he talks about, you know, the kind of feeling that you get from that. And when you use something like second person, you, know, you would think and now we're telling a story about you. You went down the stairs and you found your wife with the neighbor. You would think that that would make someone feel more invested in the story because it's now about them. It's the person who's reading the book that who is about, right? So this should draw the person in, but it's the exact opposite of what it actually does. It instead distances someone from the story. They can't invest in it because you can suspend your disbelief to think that the narrator did all this stuff or to think that the narrator is telling you about someone who did all this stuff but you can't suspend your disbelief to think I did all this stuff because Mm. I am not this person rather than drawing people into your story it distances them from it so it kind of has the opposite effect of what you would want it to have and the same thing goes with present tense and past tense You know, you would think putting a story in present tense would make somebody feel like, hey, this is immediate, this is now, this is really happening, whereas past tense would be the opposite. It would think, oh, yeah, this is a story that happened. But it's not that way. That's not the way it works. You tell a story in present tense, and it actually distances people from it more. It's interesting And I guess it makes sense as to why stories are almost always told in either first or third person and also almost always told in uh, past tense is because those are the 
things that draw people in, make them feel invested and feel like it's something that's immediate. And so, you know, he gives you that advice and says, yeah, if you're going to go against this, realize that this is what's going to happen. You know, you're going to distance your reader. And if that's fine with you, you know, there's trade-offs to it. He even talks about the omniscient point of view. And that's a, a little bit of a, you know, a distancing point of view as well. Kind of like second person where you just, I guess it's hard to take a, a story told from the point of view of some godlike narrator that can see into every single person in the world's head. Okay. And so the question then and the question now is... Why did the author choose second person? Because the story tells you what happens to you until you die. The end. <laughs> and and, I, and the answer is, I don't know. I have no idea why he chose second person. Because uh, I, I've never used it. And unless you're writing a child's book about you... And about when you came into this world and how special you are, it's just, it's weird to me. Right. It's, it's like hypnosis or something. You are walking down <laughs> a hallway. You have massive genitals. As you, you know. take each step, you're getting more relaxed. But the other thing that the person did was they structured the story. And the, the only other example I have is Memento, the Chris Nolan film that has the most weird structure of, of a, a film I like. And the structure is it tells two narratives about the same character. One is linear in one direction. The other is linear backwards. And they alternate back and forth. Memento's A story, the main story, is backwards. You see the end of the movie first, the end of the story first, and then it goes back. But it's got a B story that is the back story that is going forwards. And Memento has black and white versus color to remind you which, which is, is which. which. This one did the opposite. The main story is linear forwards. Second person, present tense. And then the B story, the back story, is second person, past tense, backwards. Starting from the end... And going back, 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 back in little increments. See, I, I, I don't know. I've never written a story like that. I've never written a story in second person except for Choose Your Own Adventures. <laughs> Help, you're shrinking. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know why you would choose to do this in this way except for like as an experiment, as a uh, let me. This is something I've never tried before. Let me see. If I can alternate between forward and backward, present tense and, and past tense. And unfortunately, the writer made a mistake like three-fourths of the way through the story and he forgot. And it all became present tense. And we totally missed it the first time through the story. The second time, we caught it and fixed it. But it's so difficult that even the writer slipped up. Right. You know, maybe that was what it was. I, we did. I, I don't know if you recall, but there was a time once way back in one of the early episodes where we ran a story that was second person story. The writer who wrote the story said in his, po his author's Author. note that uh, he wrote it on a challenge. It was one of those challenges where somebody had said, write a story in second person so he, he did that as his challenge, and apparently the story was good enough that we thought, eh, we'll look beyond the second person. I remember you saying, uh, this is a pretty good story despite the second person thing, which I'm not a fan of. We liked it enough that we went with it anyways. But yeah, that's why he wrote it in second person. Somebody said, hey, why don't you see if you can do this? And he tried it, and it was good enough that we wanted it. Well, then that's cool. Well, then so that's cool. that could have been why he tried all these crazy things. It's like, you know, the guy who wrote Spider Hunt, who was just challenged to use all sorts of dirty words in non-dirty ways in the story. <laughs> and he managed to pull it off. He's dang lucky <laughs> that the story was as good as it was. And, and, you know, it's fun to challenge yourself. It's fun to and accept a challenge from somebody else and do stuff like that. And it's just totally possible that this person is a really good writer 
and somebody challenged them to do this and they were able to make something positive out of a sow's ear. And if that's the case, then that's cool. I mean, if it were on our show, I guess there would be an author's note and we would be able to say, aha, there you go. Sometimes you just want to challenge yourself. Mm -hmm. Like I'm going to write a story in iambic pentameter. (laughs) Why anybody would do that? I hate iambic pentameter, by the way. I was trying to explain to my cousin what it was the other day. And I couldn't do it without just doing the lines, ice, skip, nice, trip, box, you know, and and going through the rhymes. But, but, you know, if if I challenged myself to write a story like that, I guess I, I could do it. What's interesting is that you never know how somebody might respond. And people all respond in different ways. And there may be somebody out there that totally eats it up. That says, I I loved this story and I loved the way that it was aimed at me and that it jumped around in time and really engaged me and made me concentrate. I just wish you'd gotten somebody else to read it because the guy (laughs) sucked, you know. Yeah, that's likely. And and that kind of stuff, it happens. It, It seems to be unavoidable because everybody likes different things. Everybody responds to different things. We really like the full cast format for our show. Mm -hmm. I I really like it. And where was it? Somebody somewhere said full cast is like a school play or it it kiddies stories down. to It brings it down to like elementary school level or something like that. And I was like, okay. And, And I guess their impression was that they don't trust the reader to be able to differentiate between characters. So they put training wheels on it by having different voices for each of those characters. I just think it's, it's fun. It opens up the world and, and, and maybe makes for more cinematic experience, even though it's audio, it's vocal. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. There's everybody has their own uh, stuff that they like. There, there was somebody who said that they thought that listening to a book made you like, it was like being a kid and having a book read to you rather than reading it yourself. You know, I've, I've seen that kind of stuff too, which I think is crap, but you know, everybody has their own opinions and they can experience books and things, whatever the way they want. So, you know, some people like this, some people like that. And there's uh, a lot of people out there to like different things. So there's that, you know, this has gone on much longer than we uh, meant for it to go on. Wasn't it supposed to be 15 minutes? We were going to do th- several 15-minute episodes of That Gets My Goat. But yes, you're right. It has gone on too long. So we're going to stop this right now. and We'll pick up next week on this conversation. I've been Rish Outfield. And I'm Big Anglovich. Good night. Please, sir, That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. But you're free to steal it.